Hey everybody, this is Jamie, and what I'm going to show you now is my latest game salad construction kit, and it's a construction kit for a labyrinth style game. In case you don't know what a labyrinth style game is, let me jump into one of the scenes here and give it a quick preview. And in a labyrinth game, what you want to do is roll your ball. Right here we have a blue ball in the, about the middle of the screen. You want to roll that through the maze, past all these various obstacles, down through here, and eventually get it into this goal hole right here. And that would let you move on to the next level. So that's a quick overview of what a labyrinth style game is. In case you don't know, I imagine most people do by now. They're pretty popular. So let's take a quick look at this. I've set this project up as an iPad landscape project with resolution independence enabled. So all of the graphics included are high resolution and ready for retina displays from the iPad landscape platform. Since those are the largest, highest resolution graphics, you could take this project and scale it down to an iPhone or a Kindle or use it for Android development. But because you're starting from iPad landscape, that's the largest, highest resolution files you can use in Game Salad. They'll be good for all of the other projects you might want to use this for. And like the description says here, this is entirely drag and drop. If you don't want to mess with Game Salad or you don't even know Game Salad behaviors and you don't want to learn them, everything in here is just drag and drop. You take an element, you drag it from the actors, palette right into your scene and let it go and it's going to work exactly like you expect it to. So let's get into these scenes and take a look and see what's included. There's five scenes included. There's a splash screen, a pause screen, and then I've set up three levels to demo all of the different elements that are included with the construction kit. Let's go to the splash screen and click preview. So here's the splash. Of course it's named Labyrinth Game Construction Kit. There's a nice big button here to go ahead and play the game. There's a little demo area down here just to give the player some time to orient themselves to how to roll the ball around. Right now I'm using keyboard controls because I'm demoing this on my computer. So this construction kit is set up with keyboard controls and also with accelerometer controls for when you're on a mobile device. And I know I've read a lot in the past that people have had trouble with accelerometer controls in Game Salad. At least that's what I've read, where maybe they weren't responsive or didn't feel smooth. But I've set these up and I think they feel great. I have it running on my iPad 3 and iPad 1 and it's super responsive and super smooth. So I think you'll be super happy with the accelerometer controls when you put this on a mobile device and test it out. So I'm going to go ahead and play this. Let's start taking a look at some of the elements here. So this is the first screen, the first level of the actual game that I have set up. Again, I've set up three demo levels. All of the graphics and all of the sounds included in this construction kit are yours to use in any of your games, whether they're labyrinth style games or not. So in addition to all the code you get with this construction kit, you also get all of the graphics and sounds to use as you see fit. And you can hear there's definitely a lot of sounds included. When you bang off the metal door there, it sounds like metal. When you bang off the walls, it's more like a wood sound. When I fall in this hole here, it kind of pops and bounces off the bottom as it fades away. So what you want to do, of course, let's roll through here. And there you go, I got through that door. I've played quite a few Labyrinth games and sometimes as soon as the ball touches the hole, you lose. But I've set this up so it's a little more 3D, a little more realistic, where the ball can roll over the hole and you have some slush until it actually goes too far in and then it falls in. Once the ball's center of gravity 
essentially goes far enough into the hole, it falls in. So once the ball's center of gravity passes enough over the hole, it gets sucked in. But until that happens, you can save yourself with the accelerometer, or of course with the keyboard, to pull yourself out of the hole just like you should be able to if it were 3D. So let's scroll through here. Let me get down here past this spinning door. There we go. It kind of kicked me out. Whoa. Uh, almost got sucked in there. And then get into the goal here at the end of level one. And you'll see at the end you're given your time, how many seconds it took you to complete that level. And because I played around and talked and explained everything that was going on, it took an exceedingly long time. 196.90 seconds and then there's a next level button so you click that and it takes you to the next level now you'll see this level has a lot more additional elements besides just that spinning door of course there's the ball here there's the holes that you'll fall in if you touch now we have these guys these are pinball bouncers if I hit this it's gonna bounce me around and take the ball out of my control quite a bit. This is a magnet as you would expect by looking at it. If the ball gets into a certain zone in front of it, it'll get sucked towards the magnet. Of course you have enough power you can roll out of it if you're quick enough and tilt your iPad or iPhone enough. You can have rectangular walls or you can have circular pegs so you have some varieties in your wall types. This is a door that will slide open when you touch this button. And then of course there's a laser gun here that shoots and if you hit the laser your ball gets respawned back at the beginning. And you can see there's perfectly horizontal and vertical walls. You can have angled walls. You can have triangles. You can really have a lot of flexibility here to set these levels up any way that you want. And there's also a pause button here. When you click it, the game gets paused, of course. And then it returns to a return to play or a, a go back button. And then it goes back to the game. And that's also a keyboard control. T on the keyboard handles pausing. So let's roll through here. And you can see how a couple of these elements work. Try to avoid these holes. It's a lot easier with the keyboard than it is with the accelerometer controls. So I'm going to hit these on purpose. Oh, and you can see it bounces you around pretty good. And I lost control and fell in the hole. So let me get back there and get by those this time. And I'll roll over and try to open that door if I don't get hit by the laser. You might be able to see me get pulled by the magnet here. Oh, I didn't get in there. Let me get, there it goes. Oh, I didn't want to go in that hole, but I did. So you can see when you're in the magnet's pull zone, it pulls the ball. Let me get back up there and avoid that this time. No, there we go. Let me see if I can get by the laser and hit that switch. Oh, it hit me. Alright, I'm going to jump to by the button. Hold on. Okay, I finally made it in there. Now when I roll over and touch this button, watch that door, it's going to slide open. So the button turns green and the door slides open. Which is great. I mean, I, that's super cool the way that works. And I just got hit again. So I'm going to jump to the third scene and show you some more of the elements that are included. Let's play this one. And of course there's a bunch more holes here. More walls, horizontal and vertical, bouncer again, another magnet. But what we have here in addition to some of these previous elements, there's this merry-go-round in the middle that spins and it's basically a lot like a spinning door. You can go into the green section, but these walls here stop you from going over it. So you kind of have to take a little ride around through into the next section of the maze. This is a fan up here. 
and where the magnet pulls you towards it, the fan will speed you up and blow you away from it. And then this object here is a shrinker. When your large ball goes into the wide end, it's going to shrink and it's going to come out the small side as a tiny little ball, which we're going to need to get through this little space here because this big ball would never fit through there. And then this object is a multiplier. When a ball rolls over it, it'll duplicate the ball and you'll have two balls. And then if another ball rolls over it, you'll have three and four and so on. So let's roll through here. You can see how some of this stuff works. I'm going to be a little quiet now so you can hear some of these sounds maybe. So there we just duplicated a ball. And again, oh, everybody's getting pulled. So let's see if I can stay in the merry-go-round. So there, that's pushing my ball now. I want to keep it in there. There we go. I'm around out the other side. Let me go shrink. There it is. Now it's a little tiny ball. Still have to maneuver through these holes. Ow! Oh, oh, I didn't make it. Alright, let me get back up there. Okay, there I am. I have a little ball again. Let me try not to fall in these holes. Slow down a little. Now when I get in front of this fan, it's going to blow me. There I go. It goes flying off really quickly. But I can still get in this goal here. Boom. So that level took me another long 192.60 seconds. And because this is the last level, of course, if I do next level, it's going to take me back to the splash screen. So let's take a quick look at some of these actors and see how all this is set up. It's going to jump to level one. Now, here's where all the actors are. I believe there's 48 different actors in here. A lot of them are scenery. For example, the magnet shadow is spawned by the magnet when it's on screen. Let's look at the level that has... Oh, I didn't want to do that. Let's look at the level that has a magnet in. So when you're looking at it in the editor and not playing it, you can see there's no shadow on the magnet. There's no shadow on these bouncers. But when I click preview, the magnet now has a shadow to it. The bouncers have a shadow. The laser gun and the button have shadows. Even this door has a hinge or an attachment to the wall. But when you look in the editor, you don't see that. So a lot of these actors spawn additional actors for themselves is scenery and that's what a lot of this stuff is there's the door hinge which if we look at the door is spawned by the door place the door hinge on the door spawn actor door hinge and you'll see all of these actors are filled with notes and very clearly named behaviors so if you do know Game Salad, or if you're in the process of learning Game Salad, all of this is spelled out exactly what it does and why it does it. So you can get in here and edit things if you want to. Of course you don't need to. It's all drag and drop. If you don't want to ever look at any of this, you don't have to. But if you do want to edit it, it should be really easy because everything is clearly named in all of the actors. That's a door. Here's the door button. There's notes in there, again, clearly named, telling you exactly what goes on and why it happens. In addition to all these actors, of course, there's a bunch of images. All of these, like I said, are yours to use in your own games. There's also a bunch of sounds, which are yours to use as you see fit. And also, along with the game salad file, there's a pretty detailed README file. Take a quick look at that just to show you what's in it. In here, the main thing you'd want to look at is probably the game level attribute descriptions. And it lists all of the game level attributes that I use in the construction kit. 
and tells you what they do and why they do it. So if you are going to edit this file, you would definitely want to check out the README so you understand exactly what all the game level attributes do and why they're there. So that's really it. That's the overview of the Labyrinth style game construction kit for Game Salad. And I hope you enjoy it and get a lot of use out of it and have fun making games with it.